What we're doing in this Fed letter is just simply trying to understand what the relationship, not necessarily a causal relationship, but a historical association between labor market conditions and wages. And so um, what we do is kind of a standard thing, which is try to break up the country into all sorts of little labor markets. Given the data, we have to define a labor market as a state. And then we just sort of look and see what the links are between various labor market conditions and wage growth has been in the past, maybe as a sign of what will happen in the future. And what we find is that there is a strong relationship between various labor market conditions and aggregate wage growth. And in particular, the ones that we think really matter are unemployment rates for people who have been unemployed for more than a month potentially less than six months, um, maybe more, maybe for people who are what are called long-term unemployed as well. Um, but the, the one factor that seems to be really important right now is, is this really high uh, share of people who are part-time for economic reasons. So that would be people who would like a full-time job, but because of, uh, because of the economic situation in their state, they, um, they aren't able to find full-time employment. That number is very high right now. It's been high throughout this expansion, and it seems to be leading to lower real uh, aggregate wage growth in the economy right now. There's this puzzle as to why wages haven't been responding to what we think is the, the kind of main summary measure of labor markets in the, in the U.S. economy, the unemployment rate. So, Actually, on the, during the recession, the unemployment rate went from under 5% all the way up to 10%, and wages didn't really fall, real wages didn't fall that much. They fell a little bit. And then on the way down, um, we haven't seen a pickup. And so that has led a lot of people to wonder what's going on. Um, and uh, given that real wage growth has been kind of slow, there's concern that there's still a lot of slack in the economy. Historically, when the unemployment rate has fallen, uh, real wages go up. Okay, so um, possibly it's because, um, uh, you know, as labor markets get tighter, um, employers need to raise wages in order to attract people to jobs. And so, uh, so that's been a very strong relationship post-World War um, up through about 2007. And uh, it was just during this recession that maybe that relationship sort of, uh, diverted from its past. Um, and you can see that because um, even though the unemployment rate doubled during the recession and then has almost fallen back to where it was pre-2008 um, by the summer of 2014, so you would have expected a big fall in wages and then a big run up back, um, we just didn't see that. And so, so that's a little bit of a puzzle that, we, that economists have been trying to understand recently. It, that's a hard question, but I, I, I think uh, one explanation is there's still a, a lot of workers on the sideline who are not fully employed, uh, who are ready to kind of jump back in. And so as long as there's this big group of people sitting out there, um, then employers still have a lot of choices uh, to, um, and they don't have to, normally wages are going to, real wages are going to really take off when labor markets are super tight and they need to attract new workers by essentially raising compensation. And as long as there is this group out there that is ready to kind of jump back in, um, they don't have to do that. Uh, and so uh, in particular, the two groups that seem to be out there right now are uh, people who've been out of work for quite a while and people who are working part-time um, but would like to work full-time. Um, by the way, there's also this large group of people who are part-time who uh, would not, who, who are very happy working part-time. And we have shown that that group has no effect on, on aggregate real wage growth. So it's kind of like a falsification test. It's not just that they're part-time that matters, it's that they're part-time but would like more hours. And so the fact that there's all this excess um, labor supply out there means that wages are, are still, still low today.
Well, I think our, our, our main finding is that, um, you know, that there still is this wage Phillips curve. That is, that there is this strong relationship between labor market conditions and wage growth. And right now, um, some of those conditions, in particular, um, the share of uh, kind of medium-term unemployed, people who've been unemployed more than a month, and uh, people who are part-time for economic reasons, uh, both these measures are still high and they still are having an influence on real wage growth. So we believe that, for example, um, if uh, these conditions were like they were pre-recessions, kind of 2005, 6, 7, um, real wage growth would probably be about one percentage point higher today than per year than, um, than it is otherwise. So slack is still having an impact on, 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 on average real wage growth of, of American workers.